What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to show you guys a couple of things that I installed in the car and just didn't have time to make videos on as well as a new part that just arrived for the engine bay. And then we've got a couple of other little things that we need to throw on the car, but let's jump right into the new parts. I'll show you the old parts that I already installed. Kind of give you guys an idea of where we're at right now. All right, so I think the last thing you guys saw that we did as far as modifications were the Eventuri intakes, the carbon fiber intakes, and obviously we have the carbon fiber charge pipes by Eventuri. I had mentioned this in the last video where I was talking about wanting to upgrade the engine cover to a carbon fiber engine cover. And huge shout out to the guys over at Keys Motorsports for sending out the Eventuri carbon fiber engine cover. In my opinion, this is just the best one in terms of style and quality that's on the market. It's really simple, plain, which I liked. I didn't want like a bunch of labeling on it. A lot of them had a bunch of labels and design elements to it. This one is pretty standard. So looks pretty much identical to the factory one. It just has the Eventuri on the side, but it's very, very minimal. And all of the indentations and designs are the exact same as the factory one. So we're gonna throw this in here, obviously gonna tie a lot of things together with this engine bay. And of course we have a lot more to do, but this is a great start in terms of styling. If you guys are interested in this engine cover, this carbon fiber engine cover by Venturi, I will have it linked down below. Probably gonna be the easiest install video ever because literally it's just held in by these grommets. We're gonna swap the old grommets from the old cover, throw them on here, and then pop it in the engine bay. Let's get to it you have just successfully removed your stock engine cover. <laughs> so as you guys can see, you got a couple of grommets right here and you just squeeze them together and pull them out. Probably the easiest way to do it. They'll come out just like that. Four grommets, just like this. I throw these on the new one. Got it on. Damn, that looks really, really good. Super, super basic, simple. Just letting the carbon fiber speak for us on this one. Slight badging on the side, but I think it looks good. I think it's tasteful. So there you go. We got that part situated. More things to come for this engine bay soon. Let's focus on what's next. Tommy L Garage, my man, has splash guards for the F8X, I mean, pretty much makes these for all BMWs, and I pretty much ran them on all of my BMWs. In terms of what you see, you don't see much because they are so, so minimal, thin plastic. They don't stick out a bunch, but they do the job. And the job is what these tires <laughs> decide to propel onto my side skirts, my extensions, which is also something that I'm gonna show you guys today that we installed. But these are extremely sticky tires. These are the Cup 2s, and you hear every single little rock that these things pick up. They are incredibly sticky. I'm pretty concerned about how long these will actually last me because of how soft and sticky the material is. They're great tires, but they're just not meant to last very long. But it is what it is. They are very, very nice performance tires nonetheless. So these guys, they love to fling up as much dirt and as many rocks and just road debris as possible, which in turn gets all over the side of my car as well as my rear quarters and these splash guards are an awesome addition because they literally save the side of your car from just getting all nicked up and and beaten on we're gonna throw these on today i'm gonna show you guys how to do it the cool thing about these splash guards he's taken a lot of time to do his r d and whatnot and they all line up with factory holes you basically just pop these little rivets out right here and he gives you new ones and you just throw them in. You barely notice them in photos, but they are doing the job of protecting your paint and the side of your car. Now, as you guys know, we just got this thing paint corrected. We just got the PPF put on, and I'm just gonna take it one step further and make sure that we got these splash guards on to save us a little bit on the sides. I'll also have these linked down below. You guys can order them directly through Tommy um, on his Instagram, Tommy El Garage. He is a real one, been around for a long time, had an F80 build for a while, but he has since uh, moved on to other platforms. So now that we have tackled everything in here, we can go ahead and shut this. We are now done with that. Like I said before, if you guys are interested 
in this engine cover. I will have it linked down below. I think it's a great fit to this engine bay, kind of a no brainer. I'm doing all even tree parts in here. May as well continue on with that theme. Very happy with that. Let's go ahead and shut this hood. Something if you don't know about the CS and GTS hoods, these are all carbon fiber. They are extremely light. And so when you shut them, you have to shut them pretty hard and it kind of makes people cringe because it looks like you're gonna break it. it sounds like you're breaking it but this is literally how you have to shut it if you don't do it this way it will not shut let me show you it has to be done it doesn't sound great but that's how you have to do it <laughs> in order to get these on we can do the fronts without jacking up the car um, we can just turn the wheel but we're gonna have to jack up the rear and take off the rear wheel in order to get those rear ones in so first we'll just start with the fronts and turn the wheel until we have enough space back there and then we will work on the backs so on these flaps you're gonna see two holes up here these two holes are gonna be replacing this push pin right over here and then the other one right up here a little bit hard to see but there's two little push pins and then the third hole at the bottom we're going to use a self-tapping screw that is just going to pop into the fender well and hold it down in there these push pins are pretty self-explanatory you have a center piece that you just push out this will fall to the ground and then you go ahead and take this guy and you can just pop out the entire thing super easy let's do it real quick All right, so now that we have the two push pins in there, we're just gonna use a hammer and flatten them all the way down. Those little pins that stick out, we wanna flatten those out and then it'll be completely locked in there. And then we can go ahead and put in a little self-tapping screw down here. All right, so those are now flush in there. Looks really good. And we'll take this black little screw that he includes in the package and that's gonna go in this last one right down here and that will completely secure the splash guard to the fender. You look at it from here, you really can't even tell that these are on the car, which is why I like these. They're very, very minimal, but they serve an actual purpose. All right, that seems secure. I don't see that coming off anytime soon. You can see from the back, it does stick out a little bit, but you can hardly tell. Now I'll go ahead and knock out the other one and straighten out the wheels and show you what it looks hey. like. All right, so we got everything straightened here. Let's take a look at the back and see what's actually protected. If I try to get as close as possible, you can see that the majority of the tire is being protected. Now, like I said, you could run these a little bit more aggressive further out, farther up if you wanted to, but I think that this is gonna be plenty fine. You know, you don't wanna run it to the point where it's sticking all the way out and super noticeable. I think that this is probably a good, happy medium to where you're not seeing it all the time your eyes just don't go directly to it but this looks really good i'm happy with that i think that that's going to get the job done i can't even tell it's there from the sides which is really nice but yeah so simple very oem plus addition now i'm going to knock out the rears um for the rears we do have to like i said we're going to have to take off the wheel jack up the car and then throw on the back one the back ones are held on by two self tapping longer screws very easy to put on so that's the thing about this kit super duper simple to install let me jack up the car and get into it one thing that i almost forgot about that i want to show you guys before i forget before i jack up the car is i'm actually running a five millimeter spacer on the back i don't love running spacers i've talked about this before unless it is a hub a true hub centric spacer turner motorsports sent me out a five mil spacer which evened up the aggression in the back on this wheel setup when it came to the sizes and the widths and the offsets that were available with Apex, the ones that I went with were as close as possible to make this a good fitment. With this tire setup and this wheel setup, I knew I was able to run a little bit more aggression out of the back. I just felt like it didn't quite match the front. So I went with a Turner Motorsports hub-centric track spacer. It's a five millimeter spacer and I'm gonna show you why 
it's such a good spacer. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think in term, if you are gonna run spacers, this is the smartest way to go about it. So this is the fitment right now. It's literally perfect. The whole car is flush. It looks super aggressive from the back. The, the front was already very flush and good, so I didn't have to do much there, but I did decide to run a five mil on the back and I'll show you the spacer once I pull the wheel off. So this is the actual Turner spacer. Now it is a very, very minimal, minimal spacer. Like I said, it's five millimeters. If you see these cutouts, that's for the hub. So it actually locks in to that hub. Not only is it locking into the lugs, but it's locking to the hub space. So you see this slide on right here? It locks in to these. Hear that? This guy ain't going nowhere. So in my opinion, if you're gonna run spacers, this is the safest way to do it to avoid any vibration issues or wheel wobbles or anything like that. I'll also have these linked down below because I, th I just think that these are gonna be one of the better routes to go without having to go too far. I know they have like future classic spacers, which are really good too, but if you're just looking for something that's a little bit more affordable, that's actually gonna work and be safe, I think these are the ticket. So let's move on to the rear portion of this. Look at these awesome dirty ass fender wells. That's something that I'm gonna be taking care of in the future. If they don't clean up, which I don't think they will, I think these are just gonna be completely dry rotted. I have something that takes care of that. I actually did this on my E36 M3, but there's a product called undercoating by Rust-Oleum. This stuff works really, really well. So I actually went through the entire E36 M3 and did this on all of the fender wells and they are so, so good, like completely black. They look brand new. So this is the way to go. I did two coats per fender well. Nice thing about the F-Series is you can completely take out all of the fender wells, including the rear. So it's pretty easy. You just unbolt all this stuff. The entire fender well will come out, the inside liner piece, you put it on like a bumper stand and then clean it up real good and go ahead and spray it off. I will do that in a future video because um, the results were phenomenal on the E36 M3. So I think that'd be a fun little DIY for you guys who are OCD and over the top like me. Like this just bothers me, I don't know why. So let's go ahead and grab our screws, flaps, drill. But these two holes right here, I believe he actually reuses the factory holes. So there are factory holes right here and here. All right, so I've decided to not run the rears. You end up getting bulge like that from the way that the screws are bending the inside. Really what's doing that is because this isn't flush in here. You have this space back here that pushes back and inevitably if you have something that's flat, it's gonna push it out like this. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have something bending like that. Obviously the plastic just doesn't sit flush with it, which isn't really anything to do with Tommy's design. It just has more to do with how picky and ridiculous I am. So there's really no way to get away from that like weird gap right there. And I don't wanna run that. I would just rather prefer not having it on and having a gap like that than doing my best to protect the rear fender. The rear fender doesn't really see a lot of dirt or rock because of the way that it's angled. So the most of the stuff that gets spit up just gets spit up into the atmosphere. It doesn't really hit the fender because the fender goes inward, it doesn't go outward. This obviously comes outward. Everything from that moment forward comes outward back here. So those make a lot more sense to me. This, I can live without having them on the rear um, just based on that fact alone. So we are gonna run it without. I didn't really run into that issue with my Supra or my F30, but it seems on this car, it's just much deeper and it creates more of like an arch with that. So I think I'm just gonna run without it. Okay, back on the ground. I apologize for the fan. Super, super hot here in North Carolina today. So we are gonna have to run it for a little bit. So now I wanna show you guys some of the things that I've added onto the car that I didn't talk about too much um, because they were put on during the detail process. It was just easier. We had the quick jacks there. The parts arrived and I just threw them on. So the first things I wanna point out are the IND RKP black risers. So these are the exact same risers I had before. However, those ones were aluminum, uh, just like the silver. And these ones are the blacked out ones uh, for obvious reasons. I kind of do the Panda theme on this car. You guys saw that I added the black IND M4 GTS badge. Tying that in with the black roundels, the shadow line roundels by American Panda Designs. And then underneath I have the three piece diffuser. Now this is carbon fiber diffuser from Souvenir. The fitment on this is very, very good. I saw some people online when I posted a photo and video of this diffuser 
complaining about the three-piece diffusers not fitting right. This thing fits very well. I haven't had any issues with it. The middle portion of the diffuser mounts up to all of the factory mounting points. These side pieces are held on by 3M and self-tapping screws. They're rock tight. Carbon fiber looks really good and it's much, much more aggressive than the factory diffuser. Some carbon fiber in there and it wraps all the way around. So when I was looking at this car from like the side and the back angle, it just kind of looked very bare to the back in my opinion because I had all of the carbon up front and on the sides and then it got the back and nothing was there. So I felt like this diffuser with this side piece really tied in the carbon on the side and everything and just continued that through the back into the diffuser and all the way across. Now there is a slight gap right here in between the diffuser and the side blades, the rear bumper splitters. It's not enough for me to complain, but I did have a few people on Instagram uh, complain about that gap. I mean, to put that into perspective, it's not even a half of my nail, quarter of in my nail. It is very, very small. So from two feet back, can't even see it. That's not something that I personally would complain about, but some people will. And I think overall that carbon fiber diffuser, just like the aggression of it, really ties in the rear very well with the wing and everything. So moving along to the side skirt extensions, these are also souvenir. These are the M performance style side skirt extensions. They are super basic fitment, perfect all the way up to each edge. Just a very, very standard, simple carbon fiber side skirt extension, flat, lightweight, held on by 3M self-tapping screws. Very, very easy to put on. And you just line it up butt to butt, pop it on, a couple self-tappers and you're good to go. But I think it made a big difference. It really just follows the lines of this part of the side skirt to the front and keeps everything really fluid with the design. Same thing up here, lines up butt to butt. So yes, I think those look really good too. Most of you guys probably didn't even notice some of the stuff that I added because it's very, very minimal. But in person, it does make quite a big difference to the entire look of the car. Another thing that I took care of at the detail shop that I didn't really talk about was I had the factory GTS hood vent painted in gloss black. It originally was just a, like a dry rotted plastic. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna drop this at paint and have them paint it for me. Turned out really, really good and ties in with the rest of the gloss black that I have going on. Gloss black roundel there, obviously the gloss black kidneys. And then of course I wrapped the splitter in gloss black PPF. So that just kind of matches everything too. This is the factory GTS front lip and splitter. The reason that I haven't changed this out, I actually have another lip for this car in the other garage, but it's a little bit different with the GTS because you have those frame mounting points that actually make this splitter and lip functional. And if I'm gonna run something aftermarket, I don't want to have to compromise some things that are functional in order to have like the aftermarket aesthetic on there. So a factory lip that is made for the M4 will not work on this car, depending on how far back it goes, because it's gonna hit those frame mounting points that are meant for the GTS. So if I do run an aftermarket lip, I'm gonna find a way to make it work with those factory GTS frame mounts. So at least it's somewhat functional. It won't be as functional as this obviously, but at least it's somewhat functional. I don't feel great about driving around the city streets, whatever, with a $6,000 lip on the front. It's just like a little bit much, but I will say with the entire car and the way it looks, the GTS lip has grown on me a little bit. I don't hate it as much. I think really the big thing for me was losing that acid orange. And once I lost the acid orange on the car, it just looked overall like a lot better. So I'm happy with that for now. We're gonna stick with it. Another thing that we added in the car that I didn't really show you guys are the carbon fiber seat backs. Yes, sir. So now I have carbon fiber seat backs on the interior. These are also super easy to install. Now these are souvenir and you basically just throw in 3M tape on the back of them and then you slide them on. But honestly, you probably wouldn't even need 3M tape. That's how good they fit. You slide them over the factory seat and they snug in super, super tight and good. Like this thing's not going anywhere. I did throw a little bit of 3M on there just for insurance, but um, yeah, they look really, really good. So that tied in the interior really well. Gonna have a couple of more things coming for this interior. So a couple of things that I'll ask you guys for your suggestions on. I'm thinking about running the carbon pieces right here. Not sure if I wanna do them. I do like the gloss black. I don't wanna overdo the carbon but leave your votes down below. Should I change those out? And also 
should I change these out to the carbon fiber grills? These grills aren't in the best of condition. They do have like some hard water marks on them that I just can't seem to get out. So I'm either gonna buy the OEM ones, gloss black and just stick with the gloss black, same setup that I have, or I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to carbon. You guys tell me what you think. I think the carbon ones only have this, the surrounding part in carbon and the inside is gloss black. Either way, drop those votes. Tell me what you think. All right, man, we are gonna wrap this one up. It is hotter than heck in this garage today. But all the parts that you guys saw in this video, I'll have linked down below. A huge shout out to Keys Motorsports for sending out the inventory. Engine cover looks really, really good in the car. I think it ties everything together very well. Tommy L Garage, big shout out to that guy too for sending out the mud flaps. Love the way that they look on this car, plus the functionality just makes sense for me. And I'm gonna link down below all of the souvenir stuff that I showed you guys, the carbon fiber rear diffuser, the carbon fiber side skirt extensions, and the carbon fiber seat backs. All that stuff, link down below. You guys know the drill. Thank you so much for watching the video. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Peace.